RCL founder did an exclusive interview with the most Google man in the world, Andrew Tate. Patrick and David, Sosnick, they all flew out to Romania. Vinny, they all flew out to Romania because he can't leave this house. He's on, he's on house arrest. Mm-hmm. So Andrew Tate opened up. His first interview post being released from prison was the BBC. BBC. They screwed that up. Yeah. We did a reaction video to that. Number one video right now in our, in our, in our YouTube channel, Seven Fair Squad. And then the second interview he does is with Patrick and David. Exclusive interview on his release from prison. Uh, we're going to do a full reaction on the Seven Fair Squad, but I want to react to what he said about his brother Tristan because his younger brother Tristan... By the good-looking guy, I've got something to, to share after we react to this clip. I want to share with you too, Milton. Yeah. But uh, let's take a look at what, tr- uh, what uh, Andrew Tate says about having the best brother in the world. Where was he located? What happened to Tristan Tate? Let's take a look at this clip. I always knew I had the best brother in the world, but he proved it in jail, and I'll tell you why. My brother was put in jail for being my brother. He hasn't said any videos. He hasn't said anything on the internet. He hasn't said any of the things I've supposedly said. He's never, the Matrix isn't attacking him. The BBC doesn't print about him, nothing. Why was Tristan Tate in jail? Because it's Tate brothers. So they just took him and threw him in a cell. Now what's interesting is, when I got out of jail, so many people near me got hit. All business partners got hit with the tax. They got hit with like a tax paperwork and uh, they were calling everyone who's ever known me and ex-girlfriends got hit and all these people got hit. And some people complained, some people didn't. But some people were like, oh, since you've been in jail, it's been so stressful for me. The media's outside my house. I'm like, stressful for you? I was in jail. What do you want me to do? And people were complaining at me. And as these people started to complain, I sat there, I said to Tristan, you got thrown in jail purely for being my brother and never for a fraction of a second did you even moan? <laughs> Didn't even, not even for a fraction of a second did he say, oh, they only put me here because of you. Why am I here? I, I'm innocent. This has nothing to do with me. Nothing. In fact, he said the absolute opposite. He said, I am so glad I went to jail with you. Hmm. I would be furious if they sent you here by yourself. If they're going to lock you up, they better lock me up. And there was a time, about two months in, because there's less media pressure on Tristan, they were talking about releasing Tristan first. And he was saying, no. I won't leave without Andrew. Going down with the ship. I won't leave unless my brother leaves. Wow. I won't leave. And he was telling the guards, I won't leave. Keep me here. I'm not leaving. And they said, the judge says you have to leave, you have to leave. He goes, then I'll stand outside the gate. I'll sleep outside. I ain't leaving this jail. And our lawyer said, well, we can make an appeal to just release you because there's less media scrutiny around you. And Tristan's like, no. Andrew's in jail. I'm in jail. He refused to leave. He was adamant he had to stay. That's a brother for me. That, was that a remote brother or was that an in-person brother? Yeah. Bro, I just visit you. I, I just go, uh, you know, put my hand on the glass. And, and they don't. And then some <laughs> don't. They just say they do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Some people, right, Milton? Some people said you said on this podcast, some friends are my friends remotely and some friends come down to Dallas to visit me. One person. I figure out who In my real years. friends are. In two years. Yeah. So if I'm a CEO of a company and I want to see who my ride or dies are, I want to see who I'm going to invest emotional capital financial capital, uh, a career capital, my reputation capital on a person, I want to see who's showing up. So, hey, if you want to work remote, work remote. Knock yourself out. My suggestion for you, move closer to a a, a company, a a founder, a CEO, a leader that you can wrap uh, your your, your entrepreneurial career, your, 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 your future around. If they're going places, you want to connect. It paid off for me. It paid off for... Me seeing that in PBD, who I consider a once in a generation type of CEO, uh, I think right now the next CEO like PBD is just being born today. I don't think for the next 30 years there's going to be another CEO like PBD. And so when you find that type of person, when you find that type of company that wants to make an impact, it's just if, if it's just about bo- bottom line money, me, myself, and I selfishly, oh, not Microsoft, work remote. But if you want to grow and create opportunities for your children, people you love and care about around you long term, you might want to be around people. So let, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. As an entrepreneur, you've been doing this for X amount of time. How do you weave out people that you can and cannot trust around you and your business and your family? Because you know there's certain people who walk into your business, walk into your circle, who become opportunists, yep. who are just with you or around yep. you for the clout, for the attention, for the opportunity of, I wonder if he'll help me. I wonder if he'll lift me up. I wonder if he'll, you know, you, give you, me money. You, you or whatever want me to give some secrets. How okay. do you, you know, <laughs> how, how, how do you weave those people out of your life? You know, I, I, we got to go through some stress, right? Look, look what the Tate brothers just yeah. went through. I got to go through some pressure with you. I got to go. We got to go through some uncomfortable situations together. And it's going to cost you money on your own. It's going to cost you effort on your own. 
Um, you know, it's it's uh, listen as much as people think you know, Matt is uh, PBD's right hand guy. You know, Patrick's never paid our rent. I've never asked Patrick for anything. I never asked him for money. I never asked him to invest in anything. I never asked yeah. him to put. I'll just ask him, hey, PB, what's the opportunity for us to get closer and align together with you? And how do we get to become the number one power couple with inside the company? How do we get the most influence to create the decisions of the future PHP agency post-PBD era and, and create this entrepreneurial country called PHP to 500,000 licensed agents? I've never asked him for money. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.